Hello everyone and welcome to another loosely scripted video. The Star Trek franchise has been pretty lucky in the calibre of actors which have appeared in the various shows and movies over the years. Obviously we know the heavyweights like Patrick Stewart, Christopher Plummer, Avery Brooks and the generally great star making performances from many of the regulars. But I wanted to make this video to give a shout out to the troupe of that guy actors. For those who may not know, for almost as long as Star Trek has existed, the various shows and movies have often reused the same set of actors for a plethora of different roles, many of which you may recognise as, hey it's that guy. As pointed out by the makers of Deep Space Nine, a lot of these actors often struggled to land leading roles or even get big roles in general due to superficial reasons, but ironically enough, by burying many of them under heavy makeup, it allowed their talent to shine through. Which, there's something poetic about that, I think. You may not know their names right now, but hopefully after this video you can better give credit where credit is due. So first I want to talk about what I call the graduates. These are actors who had small bit parts in Star Trek before landing a regular or recurring role. Top of that list is Jeffrey Combs. Now, Jeffrey Combs is well known to Star Trek fans as Wei Yun, as well as Liquidator Brunt from Deep Space Nine, and also Shran from Enterprise. Um, he originally auditioned for Riker, actually, all the way back in the 80s, before landing a small part on Deep Space Nine in the episode Meridian. He would also later appear in Voyager in the episode Sinkatsi, as Penk, the guy running that fighting ring. And Combs is one of my personal favourite actors ever, actually, and if you haven't seen his work in horror, you are missing out big time. In this genre, he's probably most famous as Herbert West from the Reanimator film series, but From Beyond is also a good shout. And a little, something kind of funny is that Combs technically played the first live-action Doctor Strange. Uh, basically in the 90s, uh, the famous B-movie company Full Moon was adapting Doctor Strange, but through some development hell shenanigans, they ended up losing the rights. So instead of just cancelling the production, they just changed the name to Dr. Mordred and they cast Jeffrey Combs. Originally he was cast in the title role of Dr. Strange, but they just kept him on as Dr. Mordred and made the film. And honestly, it's pretty great. Obviously it's not called Dr. Strange, it's, you know, it's called something different and they, they swap around another couple of names here and there, but it's effectively a Dr. Strange movie and... You know, for a low-budget sort of, you know, B-movie, it's actually a pretty decent attempt at the at an adaptation of Doctor Strange, so I would recommend checking that out. Um, I always love seeing Jeffrey Combs pop up on screen, and it would be amazing to see him return to Star Trek one day, as a lot of people were fan-casting him for uh, the Doctor role in Strange New Worlds. Unfortunately, that doesn't look like it's happening, but... I'd love to see him show up in some capacity. I know he's done a voice on this new season of Lower Decks, but I'd love to see him show up, you know, caked in makeup on in some kind of, you know, some form or other. Speaking of Deep Space Nine, there's also Mark Alimo. Um, he popped up quite a few times in The Next Generation, actually. First, he was one of these two aliens, I'm not sure which, in uh, Lonely Among Us. Then he played Commander Tabok in The Neutral Zone, Gul Maset, the first on-screen Cardassian in the franchise in the episode The Wounded, and he also played Frederick LaRoque in Time's Arrow. Obviously, his big Star Trek role was as Gul Dukat, who, in my opinion at least, is easily the best villain Star Trek has ever had. I talked about this at length already in Deep Space Nine, in my Deep Space Nine retrospective. His performance as that character is absolutely incredible. And only recently in my video on The Last Starfighter did I actually notice that he was in that as well, as a disguised alien assassin. He's also in Total Recall as a security captain on Mars. He's also acted opposite two other Star Trek captains. He acted opposite William Shatner in TJ Hooker and Scott Bakula in Quantum Leap. Then there's Susanna Thompson, who appeared twice in The Next Generation and played Lenara in Deep Space Nine before becoming the Borg Queen for Voyager. She's a pretty well-known TV actress by this point. Arrow fans will know her as Moira Queen, and I've recently been watching Timeless on Netflix, which also features her in that. She was really good as the Borg Queen, I thought. She echoed a lot of what Alice Krieger did with the role in First Contact, but she kind of put her own spin on it, so I thought she was a great addition to Star Trek Voyager in general. Speaking of Voyager as well, uh, there's Tim Russ. Now, Tim Russ originally auditioned for Geordie LaForge all the way back uh, when The Next Generation was getting off the ground, and it actually came down to Tim Russ and the guy who got it, LeVar Burton. He then later appeared in the Next Generation episode Starship Mine, which is 
kind of funny because he has a fight with Captain Picard and Picard knocks him out using a Vulcan nerve pinch. Um, he later appeared as an Enterprise B bridge officer in Star Trek Generations before eventually becoming Tuvok in Voyager. He's a pretty busy guy. He's been in the Orville, he's been in Supergirl, and he's famously the we ain't found shit guy from Spaceballs. Tim Ross is also a lifelong musician and singer, and one of his music videos actually comes as an extra on the Voyager DVDs, and it's pretty good. And then we have J.G. Hertzler. J.G. Hertzler is, of course, best known as the awesome General Martok, but he's also in Emissary as the Vulcan captain of Sisko's ship at Wolf 359. He was also Laz in DS9's Chimera, the Herogen fighter in Sunkatsi, Koloss in Enterprise, and recently lent his voice to Lower Decks. Speaking of Enterprise, there's also John Fleck, who's best known for the Suliban Silic, but... Honestly, he's had so many roles in Star Trek, Memory Alpha just says multiple characters because there's just a ridiculous amount of people that he's played. Which segues as nicely into who I'm calling the champs. These are actors who have had three or more roles across Star Trek. The reigning champion of this category, though, is without a doubt, Vaughn Armstrong. Vaughn Armstrong has played 11 different characters across Star Trek. He's also one of a handful who have played a Klingon, Romulan, and Cardassian, as well as a Borg. He actually qualifies as a graduate as well for playing Admiral Forrest, but I just think the sheer range of this guy is worth pointing out here. Again, on the Voyager DVDs, he gets a nice wee segment where he talks about embodying so many different roles, and he's a welcome face at conventions to this day. Coming in with seven characters is Kenneth Mitchell. Mitchell has played three different Klingons in Discovery alone, plus the character Aurelio in Season 3, as well as a bunch of voice work in Lower Decks. Uh, a real shame, though, was Mitchell's diagnosis with ALS. The role of Aurelio was actually written specifically for him to incorporate his wheelchair use. I hope to see and hear a lot more from him in Star Trek because he's been fantastic in every appearance he's made thus far. With six roles is Joseph Ruskin, who first appeared back in the original series and continued appearing right up until Enterprise. There's Brian Thompson, who had five roles across the Next Generation, Deep Space Nine, and Enterprise, playing Klingons, Jem Hadar, and Romulans, among others. Thompson also had a steady career in some B action movies and also had a recurring role in the X Files. Again, with five roles is Gregory Itzen, who showed up in Deep Space Nine and Enterprise twice each and Voyager once. He's a pretty well known TV actor at this point, and 24 fans will know him as President Charles Logan from season five. With four roles, it's Susie Plaxon, probably most famous for Kalar in The Next Generation. Standing at almost six foot two, she is the tallest female actress ever in Star Trek and has often said that her height is what probably got her so many roles in Star Trek, whereas it often disqualified her from other roles in more mainstream shows. But she's always a welcome presence as well. She's great as the female Q in Voyager and awesome in Enterprise as well. Also with four roles is James Cromwell. He appeared twice in The Next Generation, once in Deep Space Nine before landing Zephram Cochrane in First Contact. Cromwell is a very well respected and very busy actor, being an Academy Award nominee because of Babe, and often campaigns as an animal rights and climate change activist, which is nice. Also with four roles is Clint Howard, who first appeared in the original series when he was only seven years old, and has most recently appeared in Star Trek Discovery in the role dubbed Creepy Orion. He's the brother of Ron Howard and frequently shows up in B-horror sci-fi and action movies. He's known as a real sort of class clown, always keeping cast and crew entertained, even in harsh conditions. Just an all-around cool guy. Another actor with four roles is James Sloyan, I hope I'm saying that correctly, um, who is just a really terrific actor. His performances as Admiral Jarrock in The Next Generation and Jetril in Voyager are really amazing, just really good stuff. And finally, we have Caroline Seymour, again with four roles, although I honestly thought her Romulan characters in The Next Generation were supposed to be the same person. Mass Effect fans will know her as the voice of Dr. Chakwas, and Gears of War fans will know her as the voice of the Locust Queen. She does a lot of voice acting, which is hardly surprising considering, you know, the quality of her voice. And finally, some more noteworthy actors who haven't had a lot of roles but are still highly memorable in their appearances. First up is David Warner, who played John Talbot in The Final Frontier, Gorkon in The Undiscovered Country, and Gulma Dredd in Chain of Command. David Warner is another one of my favourite actors, just someone who has this effortless command of the screen. He's also one of those inexplicable British thespian actors who's done a load of weird sci-fi and horror movies, which 
I kind of really respect in a funny way. Tron fans will know him as Sark, he's in Time Bandits, Titanic, Privateer 2, he was the voice of Ra's al Ghul in the DC Animated Universe, he was in The Exorcist, He's done a lot of stuff, and he's always, always great. And finally, we have Tony Todd, who played Worf's brother Kern, and the older Jake Sisko in DS9's The Visitor. Tony Todd was also famously the Candyman from the film The Candyman, and he showed up in Babylon 5 as well. Tony Todd, like David Warner, is just a reliably great actor, no matter what he's in with that impossibly deep voice, which naturally has gotten him a lot of voice work. For something more obscure though, I would recommend Tony Todd in The Man From Earth, which also features John Billingsley, and was written by Jerome Bixby, who worked on the original series, The Twilight Zone, and a bunch of other cool stuff. There's probably so many others that I'm not remembering or haven't found. Um, I did ask for some suggestions on Twitter to help with this video, you should probably follow me on Twitter, by the way, at Rowan J. Coleman for all my hot takes. But if there's any more Star Trek That Guy actors I missed, please give them a shout out below because I think these guys are the real unsung heroes of the Star Trek franchise from an acting point of view. Thank you for watching. If you like these videos, subscribe and hit the bell icon to stay up to date on my new uploads. If you want to help the channel grow, join my patrons or my YouTube members where you can see videos early as well as some other exclusive content. Speaking of which, I'd like to quickly thank all of my patrons and members who are now appearing on screen. Have a good one, and as always, live long and prosper.